Hi, I'm Jan Thompson. I'm a professor in the Department of Natural Resource Ecology and Management at Iowa State University. I'm an urban ecologist, and so I'm interested in natural systems in urban areas specifically, and I'm interested in forests, and I'm interested in streams, and any kind of natural features that are largely left as remnants in urban landscapes. We're here in Daly Park in the city of Ames. Uh, Daly Park is on the western edge of Ames. It was called Daly Park and Greenbelt, but it never had a greenbelt until 2006 when we designed a project that was funded by the EPA to demonstrate different water quality protection measures. So we demonstrated channel protection and this site is all about channel protection. We installed a, a modest urban riparian buffer on this site to make the green belt a true green belt. We also looked at infiltration practices in residential settings, um, which included installation of a number of rain gardens. And we also looked at filtration practices. So we were working cooperatively with both the City of Ames Parks and Recreation Department, Public Works Department, and Iowa State University Facilities Planning and Management. So with Iowa State Facilities, we were looking at a sand filter that they installed adjacent to the east parking deck. The purpose there was to run water off the deck and through a sand filter before it entered the stream. All three sets of practices were along College Creek. So that's the feature just behind me here. Uh, we're near the headwaters in the park. So today I have uh, a couple of undergraduates who are working with me this summer uh, come out to participate. And they include Calvin Ford, uh, who is a forestry student in my department at Iowa State University, and Ross Curry, who is also an Iowa State student in our wildlife program, uh, Animal Ecology. And they are both uh, working on a number of projects, but one of them being helping with maintenance here at the buffer. So I'll turn it over to them. Hi there, my name is Ross Curry, and I'm a senior in Animal Ecology at Iowa State. One of my favorite things about working at the, the buffer here in Dally Park is that the sheer amount and diversity of wildlife I see while I'm doing maintenance work. This is actually going to be registered as a monarch way station. We're working with other people uh, to designate it as that. And part of what they do is they go through and count all the different plants. And if you can see around me, that is quite a task. And that's a good thing that we have this many on the site. So this is a common milkweed plant. You can see it's in bloom here. And monarchs use large stands of milkweed plants best because they have more places to lay eggs and more habitat to choose from. Now, monarch caterpillars, of course, eat the leaves and that's how they become distasteful to birds and that's one of the major defense systems. Whereas the monarch butterflies then, of course, use the nectar out of the flower. So one of my favorite parts of working out here is the idea that not only are we protecting the landscape and working with homeowners, but we're also working with nature as well. Hey, I'm Calvin Ford. I'm a third year forestry student here at Iowa State. Recently with the coronavirus, we've seen how important having these uh, close public spaces really is. Whenever I've been out here working, it's been very obvious how much these places have been used by pedestrians, either walking, rollerblading, taking their dogs for a walk. I've seen plenty of people stopping by, looking and smelling the flowers, which is an awesome sight to see. So Ross and Calvin are gonna go ahead and do some work while we're out here and we'll check in with them later. Uh, but I just wanted to take the chance to describe a little bit of the structure of the buffer. It is about 800 feet long, this reach of the stream. And we installed a strip of prairie along the outside edge, followed by a zone with trees and shrubs, which we planted in 2007. And then closest to the stream, we have a layer of just trees. So it's a very long, narrow feature in the landscape. We tried to use only native species to the area, and that would be appropriate in a riparian zone. We planted five different species of trees to include some diversity in the planting. So we have uh, behind me here a bur oak, a swamp white oak, 
a sycamore. Uh, the tallest trees out here are sycamore. We planted some hackberry and we also planted some river birch of trees. And then we have several species of shrubs. We planted uh, elderberry, we planted uh, dogwood, we planted also some nine bark and a couple of other species as well. And then in the prairie strip, we included about five species of grasses. Also in the prairie, we included about 15 species of forbs. We did not plant the common milkweed, uh, so there are a number of plants out here that the seed existed on this site and merely by stopping mowing and letting the vegetation grow a bit, those stands of milkweed came back. We planted a purposefully swamp milkweed um, to include more um, later flowering species. So we tried to have species that flower early and then a progression of flowering throughout the season, which is good for pollinator species as well, in, in addition to its role just for diversity. So that was the plan. The prairie strip is on the outside edge. It's just inside from the trail that goes through Daly Park. And the trail is nice both because people have excellent proximity to the buffer itself and to see the stream feature, but also because it serves as a level spreader for the water. So it's really surprising to a lot of people when they look at a large green space to understand how much water is running off of that lawn. And the entire park area here at Daly Park was actually um, shaped with bulldozers. It was all graded uh, to have the morphology that it has. And when they do that, they compact the soil. And so we did a number of different infiltration tests to look at the rate of water movement into and through the soil, both in the main part of the park and in the buffer itself. So we were pleased to learn that the buffer itself, in the different zones of the buffer, the infiltration capacity is such that it can absorb all of the water that's contributed to it from the surrounding landscape. And the drainage area in this reach of the stream is about 16 acres. It includes the park and part of the yards of the homes around the park. And the buffer itself is about four and a half acres uh, and is able to capture all of that runoff. So the reason it's important to use these kinds of features in urban landscapes is because of the other alterations that we've made that really negatively impact the typical natural hydrology of the system in an urban area. So we add houses with roofs, we add sidewalks, we add streets, and all of those surfaces, uh, water runs across rather than uh, being able to soak in. So this particular feature is one that is designed specifically to increase infiltration of water before it reaches the stream itself. This is one of my favorite little spots in the buffer and it illustrates a couple of points. Uh, there's a really nice patch of rose milkweed here which is beautiful. About three weeks from now when it starts heading out it'll have a, a soft purplish cluster of flowers at the top of the stem. They're really very attractive and uh, they're also very very good for pollinators. There are a lot of uh, shrubs that naturally grow in this area. Right behind me is a stand of dogwood that was here before we planted the buffer. Also in the shade of a very large cottonwood tree. So there were a number of uh, trees and shrubs on the site before we planted the buffer. Some of them were less desirable species like honeysuckle and autumn olive, which are known to be relatively invasive and weren't uh, native to this area before. We removed a lot of that, but we did leave a lot of what was here. So you see behind me this large area of cattails. Those are actually the result of a previous Eagle Scout project, probably about 25 years ago, where this was just starting to really serve as a wetland feature in the landscape. And his uh, activities created a, a much larger wetland area. It's very um, productive for wildlife. Uh, you can hear in the background the, the red-winged blackbirds uh, chattering at us. They really like the wetland area. It's been home to uh, Canada geese. It's been home to mallard ducks. It's been home to all kinds of wildlife uh, in this area. So it's really a lot of fun. 
it's also unfortunate that the reed canary grass that you saw more of at the last site and the cattail marsh, those two species, although they are usually native, there are some non-native cultivars, they're also very aggressive. So we have done some work to maintain them in certain areas, but try to discourage them in other areas. But this is College Creek as it exits the park, as it uh, moves from Daly Park into a more residential area in Ames. And this is more than likely an unnatural little waterfall that was created when uh, rock material was left here uh, when the neighborhood was constructed. But it made this lovely little waterfall and I've enjoyed uh, visiting this space often out here. We do have a lot of species of fish, surprisingly, in these small streams. Um, they include spotted dace, a lot of different minnows, not big fish, but small fish. But we did have a, a surprising variety of fish given the size of the stream. And also a lot of, uh, we did some sampling for macroinvertebrates and we found a, a very nice diversity of macroinvertebrates. Those kinds of organisms thrive in shaded water that's kept a little bit cooler than water in open areas. And also when you have a feature like this with uh, some, some rock or um, tree branches that create turbulence that also increases the dissolved oxygen in the water, which is also good for all of the organisms in the water. This is a nice bridge that the city had on site before we installed the project. And it's great, I see people all the time up here looking over the edge. And what you can see is the stream running beneath the bridge. And you, can, you have a great vista, you can see fish, you can see dragonflies, you can see all uh, birds of many different species. You can also see, if you're looking for it, storm sewer outlets, which are contributing to the stream flow. So one disadvantage of a surface feature like a riparian buffer is that it doesn't solve the problem of contributions coming from off-site. So it solves the problem of overland flow, but it doesn't solve the problem uh, from stormwater management facilities. And so our historic approach to managing stormwater has been to put it in pipes and channel it to the nearest stream. So this is an area in the buffer that we had the opportunity to plant more prairie. Uh, the south side of the buffer has a very narrow strip of prairie, but up here we had more space where we could incorporate a larger expanse of prairie. And again, like the tree and shrubs, we used all native ecotype uh, plant material. And you can see here some, some vervain, uh, so some nice purple coloring. Uh, right now it's June, so we don't have as much in bloom, but there are some uh, Indian grass that's starting to head out. All of these tufts of grasses are uh, big blue stem. You can see last year's uh, seed stems from the big blue stem. So we have big blue stem, Canada wild rye, Indian grass among the grasses. And this area in particular has been uh, fun to watch. It's different every year. So if we have a dry year, we'll have more grasses. And if we have uh, a wet year, we have more of everything else just about. Um, and it's just fun to watch it every year. It's different every year. There are different parts of the buffer on this side that, are, that do come right up to people's yards. So this is one of the places where we invited a lot of input on design and have worked closely with uh, residents nearby uh, to ensure that they understand the, uh, the ecology of the buffer as well as we take into account uh, some of their uh, comments and concerns.